Today, we uncover some of the most infamous punishments in the U.S. Navy, both past and present. From the bread and water punishment to mastheading and keel hauling, we'll explore the dark and intense world of extreme disciplinary actions that U.S. Navy sailors face at sea. We'll give you a rare glimpse into the raw and gritty reality of life in the brig and the mental and emotional challenges that come with being subjected to these brutal punishments. The Uniform Code of Military Justice, or UCMJ, is a collection of disciplinary rules that the U.S. Navy adheres to. This code of conduct is something that all U.S. military members, including sailors in the Navy, must follow. It helps keep discipline and good order. The UCMJ also sets up a system of military tribunals and rules for making sure the code is followed. Because of this, Navy sailors are held to a high standard of behavior and must follow the UCMJ's rules and laws. When sailors break the rules of the UCMJ, they may receive various types of punishment, and among those is the feared bread and water detention reserved for the lowest pay grades of sailor only. The practice has drawn a lot of criticism, but is not nearly as harsh as past naval punishments. Outdated Naval Punishments Thankfully, these punishments are not on the books anymore because the list could shock even the most hardened torturer. Mastheading. Minor violations may have required a sailor to climb the mast of a sailing ship and remain there for a predetermined period of time in the chilly wind. This might be rather unpleasant and isolated, and it required the sailor to endure the movement of the ship at its most extreme. The top of the mast was also exposed to the elements, which could lead to sunburn or just getting very hot or cold, depending on the season. The punishment was called mastheading. Keel hauling. Sailors could be flogged and, at one point, keel hauled, which meant dragging them underwater three times across the hull of the ship. Now, what do we know about hulls of ships? That's right, they were full of barnacles, not the most enjoyable way to spend your day. Barnacles could open wounds and deep cuts and can become infected. With the rudimentary medical practices of the day, that could be a death sentence. Not to mention the fact that blood in the water attracts sharks, especially in warmer tropical waters. Flogging. Flogging with the cat o' nine tails meant having your back skin ripped open as each of the tails or cords was made to do just that. After being flogged, the punished person had salt water thrown over the open wounds to prevent infection. The salt being added to the open wounds ensured the level of pain became almost unbearable. Caning. For younger sailors, and they were common in those days, the punishment of caning was reserved especially for them. Caning involved hitting a sailor across their butt with a solid cane. The severity of the punishment was determined by the number of strokes. Caning would cause painful, raised welts on the skin, which were frequently blue or purple in color. Birching. Birching was another punishment in which the sailors would be struck with objects. The perpetrator would be struck across the back with a bundle of birch sticks. A sailor could receive 12 to 24 strokes with these. The birch sticks were usually hung in the galley where steam kept them supple. Bread and water punishment remained. These types of punishments and others like it have been ended by law. The Royal Navy even ended the use of the bread and water punishment in 1891, but the United States actively used it until 2019. In the beginning, sailors were sent to the brig or the ship's jail, and while there, for up to 30 days, they would receive all the dry bread and water they could consume. As time passed, the punishment was limited to a seven-day limit, and later to three days. Still, it was a harsh punishment, and the sailor did not receive their entire daily allowance of vitamins and minerals. This is a time when scurvy, caused by a lack of vitamin C, was a big killer. Especially in the 1800s, many sailors would pick up the disease in solitary confinement like this. The experience of bread and water punishment, except for the fact that the sailor being punished with this very unappetizing method was not able to communicate with anyone, the whole experience was just completely unpleasant. The sailors in the US Navy who later got this punishment were also monitored by a medical professional while it was happening. 
The process of losing your freedom, cell phone, and access to the buffet in the mess had the desired effect in most cases. Sailors would think twice before committing the offense which got them there. To make matters worse, the food prepared by the U.S. Navy culinary specialists is generally of good quality, and food is one of the best ways to raise morale. Someone on a bread and water diet misses out on this. One sailor wrote about his experience with the bread and water punishment by stating they were imprisoned in the brig of the USS Enterprise for three days on bread and water. The food was served three times a day by a brig guard who came to their cell and asked how many slices of bread and little cups of water they wanted. About a half hour later, the guard returned with the requested food. They were expected to eat it all. The first meal was almost comical, but by the second and third meals, they became increasingly disappointed with the monotony of bread and water. They got creative, making bread sandwiches, bread tacos, and anything else they could think of to make it less boring. But eventually, they became sick of bread and ate less of it. The punishment was meant to emphasize that they had messed up and were being punished. Despite not feeling hungry during their sentence, being in a detention cell at sea on bread and water was a clear indication of the severity of their infraction. They acknowledged that they had earned the punishment, and it was likely rock bottom for them. They were released from the brig soon after midnight during mid-rations, and their first meal of leftover beef noodles was arguably the best they had ever had, better than any steak and crab legs they had eaten afterward. In the military, a system of rewards and punishments is important because soldiers are expected to go right into battle. Consensus has it that without effective punishment, the military would have a much tougher time getting its job done. Have you or someone you know been disciplined on an aircraft carrier? Please feel free to share your experience by leaving a comment below. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. Until next time, this is Fleet Files signing off. I'll see you in the next video.